Talk a little bit about you know what a soybean seed treatment is, you know, insecticide, fungicide combination, and how does that work to protect the seed and the plants throughout the year? Well, we, as you said, yes, so with Cruiser Max beans, we do have an insecticide, we do have a fungicide in there, and the there's contact and they're systemic, so some of them are protecting on the seed coat, and other ones are growing grow up through the, the parts of the plants, such as Cruiser does, protecting the growing points. Uh, so it can protect the roots and the shoots when it comes to the insecticide from insects. And for diseases, it's both seed and the soil borne that it's protecting against. So what am I getting with a seed treatment? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to decide whether I'm going to use a seed treatment this year. You know, what are the, what are the benefits of using it? Well, this year in particular, if you, I'm standing here, it's uh, 26 degrees out today, which is unheard of for March. So we've had a relatively mild winter and there's a lot of talk around that uh, some of the insects probably haven't been killed off by a cold winter, a deep frost, So, and also how that affects diseases is a bit of an unknown too. So uh, there's a good potential that a lot of this diseases and insects have overwintered very well this past season and I think there's a good fit uh, and we'll see that in the next coming bit what, what starts to emerge as far as insects, uh, how they're going to fit I think it, we'll, we'll see. What about uh, some specific insects, some specific diseases that you know, uh, you know, growers tackle here in Ontario, for example? Well, the big one when we first launched Cruiser Box Beans and what drove the growth was bean leaf beetle pressure. We uh, really uh, was doing an excellent job on protecting against bean leaf beetle. And so that's one to watch out for. And aphids is probably the other big one that we always watch for. And it, it's really hard one to predict. Yes, we can look at what's overwintered, and, but there's always those populations that can blow in too. So uh, those would be the two insects we would be probably mainly watching for. Uh, seed corn maggot does play a role if you've had manure applied to a field or the field is a high organic matter field, it does show up there as well. As far as diseases, uh, Pythium's a big one if we get into, like we're getting nice and uh, dry here now, but things can turn around quickly in the spring and if it gets wet, Pythium can start to show up and Rhizoctonia likes wet and dry cycles and warm and cold, so if we start to see warm those types of cycles, I think those diseases as well can, can appear. Take us through the year if I'm using a seed treatment, for example. What, what am I going to see early? How is my plant going to perform? Um, and then through the year, how is it going to perform, as I say, all the way through the yield, for example? Well, some of the things we've heard from growers, some of the benefits is just good, even emergence rather than uh, them coming up at different times. We see nice, even emergence. We see a strong stand establishment. Um, the plants just look healthy. They've got a bigger root system as they're developing, and it's protecting them early season. Um, so that, that's kind of the things we'll see and then if we do have insects and diseases uh, we're going to see a benefit from them uh, just being able to be uh, pull through that and establish their, uh, uh, their, their plant factory or however you want to call it uh, early season so it's that early season protection. Talk about a little bit about return on investment. Um, obviously you know a healthy plant is going to, it's, it's got a potential to, to yield higher. Um, talk about the return on investment and potential yield gains. Yes, there's two ways as well, like there is yield and over the years what we've seen is about uh, what we see in the early season protection is translated into healthier plants and we're getting on average about two bushels an acre and this falls in line with uh, trials that uh, Horse Bonner has done as well with OMAF so we're falling in line there that it's a, an average. Where we see a difference is that when you do have those insect problems that we do see higher bumps in yield and uh, bean leaf beetles sometimes four to six bushels an acre. We've seen aphids uh, in Quebec as high as eight bushels making a difference on, on yield so just, it, it's interesting because Cruiser is one that we still see some yield bump even in the absence of pest and uh, it's something we've done a lot of research on with this vigor effect so we do get a bit of a yield bump even in, in under low pest pressures. The other thing is if you're growing IP soybeans is that uh, 
these insects pests such as uh, uh, bean leaf beetle and aphids also have a virus in them that they can put in that plant right from the start and those viruses can appear in the seed so whether you're an IP grower or whether you're a seed grower that can appear in the seed uh, later in the season as well I think if you're knocking those populations down early season uh, it it's going to reduce what you see later in the season because you're knocking the generation that can reproduce and it could reduce a spray that you have to do in a year and it's also then it's also protecting those beneficials so the beneficials are helping you uh, protect against the, the insects.